I think the use of the word deal has to be used slightly cautionary in some sense. Uh, I think what we're looking at at this weekend is perhaps just an agreement not to escalate things further. Uh, and should we get an agreement like that and should we get a, a kind of higher level approach that, that aligns with that, emerging market debt should feel more comfortable to investors. Recently, there's been a concern about global growth downside being very worrying and concerning for investors. But this, if we get that agreement, takes away some of those downside concerns in the relatively short term. So for fixed income investors in emerging uh, markets, developing uh, economies, how should they now allocate their portfolios exactly? Give us some uh, advice. Well, this is certainly, in our opinion, becoming an increasingly positive fixed income world. We do have a backdrop of uncertain global growth still. And in that environment, fixed income assets should do well. In that context, emerging market debt has done well this year. But particularly, we're finding investors are favouring hard currency assets over local currency. Returns this year have been well aligned with that expectation. So slightly more defensive in the hard currency space than local currency. But we're certainly recommending investors continue to allocate in that way at this juncture, awaiting further developments around trade and global growth. So why are local currency uh, you know, bond uh, yields uh, not so attractive at this point? Well, certainly from a longer term valuation perspective, local currency is a more compelling asset class in our opinion. But in the environment we're in today, where there is still some uncertainty about growth, potentially conversations about end of cycle in the US as well, typically that's an environment where the US dollar strengthens. We don't think we're going into that environment, but certainly investors have been more concerned about it. And local currency is more volatile than hard currency. So the more defensive starting point is hard currency for many investors, including ourselves. So with uh, global central banks, right, the Fed and ECB and SNB really keeping their rates uh, on hold right now, um, what does that mean for uh, emerging market debt investors? Well, again, it's another positive step. Um, I think we have to be, again, careful that central bank cutting rates aggressively because global growth is really deteriorating would be a concern for emerging market debt. But at this juncture, it looks more like insurance cuts from the Fed. We think we'll get maybe one or two cuts from the Federal Reserve in coming months. Uh, China stand by ready to add more stimulus if necessary. And again, that should ultimately be a positive for emerging market assets uh, in the medium to long term. So in this uh, context, what kind of returns can uh, investors expect? Well, so far this year, we've already seen nearly 11% returns in the hard currency part of the universe. Local currency is 8%, both of those in dollar terms. It will be difficult to maintain such return levels, isn't it? Yes, I it? think from a forward-looking perspective, it's a, a very fair point. Um, but I think that if we're looking at picking up the yields of the asset classes, which are about 6 to 6.5%, plus maybe some capital appreciation in hard currency, um, and maybe some even more aggressive capital appreciation in local currency should we get that weaker dollar as well. We could be looking at more elevated, but at this stage, I think a sensible base case is to say around the yield of the asset class, plus maybe a little bit of capital appreciation on both. So given uh, these uh, high yields, uh, what's your take on the uh, high um, you know, yield debt? Uh, is it too risky to invest in uh, you know, chunk uh, bonds right now? No, I think it's, it's important to take a very differentiated approach, approach. This is an important environment for an active manager such as ourselves. And I think it's very important to um, uh, differentiate between good stories and bad stories where you're well compensated for the risk. So countries in the hard currency space that we like are countries such as Ukraine or, uh, or Ghana uh, or Kenya. Um, but whereas in the local currency space, we really favour more countries such as Indonesia, Russia, we think you get well compensated for the risk. Again, that's not the case for all high yielding parts of the universe. It's important to be differentiated. Now, we had a very attractive uh, bond sale in Ghana uh, of some uh, 3 billion US dollars, a recent one in Qatar, 12.5, one in Saudi, uh, 7.5 billion US dollars. Are these the countries that you look at as well when it comes to emerging market debt? Yeah, we're certainly very familiar with those issuance. Um, financial markets are allowing some of these issuers to come to market at reasonably uh, attractive levels for both them and investors, as well as being quite low volatility type markets at the moment. So investors, uh, or sorry, issuers are able to issue uh, debt reasonably easily. And many of these issuers are taking advantage of that. Some of those names you mentioned are not necessarily ones that we found compelling stories. But again, that comes back to the point of the importance of differentiation, not all high yield investments are the same in that context. But uh, recent data has shown that uh, the bond sales by emerging uh, market uh, issuers have fallen by some 15% in the first uh, three months of the year. Um, so where should new issuance come from? 
Well, again, it would be very difficult to be uh, generic in a response to that. It would be different for different regions and different parts of the asset class. As you mentioned, some of the, the Middle Eastern countries and some of the African countries are using this opportunity to issue. We, don't, we kind of expect that to continue. But a more kind of structural perspective, there are certainly countries that have issued early this year. Um, and there are some that are still waiting for financial conditions to evolve through the course of this year. So quite difficult to be too generic, but it's more uh, specific in region and country is the way that we focus on that. And then, of course, at the global, uh, you know, recession fears and uh, maybe a fresh uh, financial crisis in Turkey is uh, further denting appetite as well, right? Well, Turkey, again, is, is important to differentiate. I mean, certainly when I talk about some of the higher yield yielding countries that we do like, Turkey is not one of those. We see Turkey as deteriorating from a fundamental perspective. Uh, clearly, today has represented a day when Turkish assets are performing quite well on the back of the Istanbul election result yesterday. Um, but we don't see that being sustained, and we don't think that this addresses any of the underlying fundamental concerns in Turkey. Uh, and therefore, that would be a position that we would be typically running as an underweight in our portfolios at this juncture. For a Swiss investor here, uh, would you prefer government debt or corporate debt uh, in emerging markets at this point? It's a great question because we get asked about corporate debt quite a lot and the perception of it is, is that it's quite risky and quite uncertain, but it is a very, very diversified universe and actually has some very good defensive characteristics. So, dependent on the appetite of the investor, you know, if they wanted to be very aggressive, perhaps they would look at local currency. Perhaps if they were more conservative, then um, corporate debt is a very good uh, asset class for them, given the defensive characteristics that it's sustained. And which uh, sector picks? Is it more the tech, uh, you know, um, players or maybe more infrastructure plays as well? Uh, we're favouring more at the moment. We're looking more typically at kind of quasi-sovereign type issuers at the moment as well. So some of the quasi-sovereign issuers in Brazil and some of the Latin American countries, that's typically the most um, obvious thematic that we've been looking at at the moment. And again, given it's such a wide universe, there are more than 600 issuers in the corporate space. Uh, thematics beyond that are perhaps more uh, isolated to countries and particular uh, opportunities that we see in that space. Now, what kind of hedging strategies would you adopt when it comes to, you know, emerging market debt? Because a lot of international investors might not be so familiar with uh, these specific individual countries. Mm. So some of the uh, options that are available to us as fund managers and potentially to investors as well are, you know, US Treasuries. I mean, albeit obviously Treasury yields have moved a long way, but demonstrating very clear risk off and defensive type characteristics. Treasuries we can use in our hard currency portfolios. In the local currency side of the universe, uh, long dollars versus EMFX has some very defensive characteristics as well. And for those investors that can think a little bit outside emerging market debt uh, or emerging markets, long Japanese yen is another, or even the long Swiss franc uh, uh, view has some merits in that context. Quite defensive characteristics that can be used in portfolios and they're actually demonstrating those characteristics very well uh, in recent weeks. And what kind of impact will there be from the weakening uh, greenback as well? Because uh, the dollar has come down in the last uh, three months. Yeah, it's quite hard to have a very strong directional view on the US dollar right here because of those concerns about end of cycle and global growth and trade wars still being prevalent. But in our opinion, there are still some key reasons why the US dollar could weaken on a medium to long term basis. For example? Uh, valuation. Uh, portfolio flows, there's been a lot of asset money uh, flowed into US assets over the medium to long term in recent years. Uh, and some of that could start to come out of the US given that uh, valuation characteristics are not particularly attractive there. So some of those long term arguments are still in play. If we do get a weaker dollar, emerging market currencies should appreciate. In our opinion, emerging market currencies are undervalued. But today, I think it's right to be a little bit more defensive around that view for the dollar. Right now, we don't have a particularly strong directional view for the US dollar today. We haven't uh, talked about currency war risks uh, for a long, long time. But do you think that, you know, with all the issues on the table, that could become uh, an issue and a problem again? Uh, I don't think it will become a problem in the way that it was discussed in past years. But I think what we are seeing is bilateral trade agreements that are being made primarily by the US with other countries are often having currency clauses embedded into them, which is quite an interesting dynamic. I don't think that takes us to a currency war type dynamic, but it maybe gives us some uh, a new framework to think about currencies in the future. I'm not saying that we're there today, but maybe that's an interesting development that we need to be aware of in the future. Mm -hmm.